Hey, what's up turtles? Crick here. We're going to be taking a look at the tools I use for wood carving. But before I show you the tools, I want to show you some of the utensils I made using my tools. And uh, all the utensils I'll be showing you are all from the same cherry tree. Here's a little uh, scoop for, for dry goods, coffee, whatever. Wood scoop, a little thumb scallop right there. I really like that. It's all in the subtle details when you start making stuff like this. It's really limited to your imagination. Here's a little turner I made for my small cast iron pan. I've used this, I think in a video last year, at least one or two. This is really nice, really convenient. I really like how this turned out. I really like the way I did this handle up here too. And a lot of the times the wood sort of tells you how the design is going to be, or at least for me anyways. I don't really have a lot of predetermined designs. I just kind of start making it and see where it goes. And lastly, there's a long handled spoon I made. I like how it's not straight. This is a little off center from the bowl of the spoon, and this has a little curve to it. I sort of like that organic feel. I made this extra long for if I was going to be using eating mountain house meals or something, something like that, long enough handle to get the whole way to the bottom of the bag. But these are just some examples I want to show you. Now starting with the tools, the saw is really important for woodworking in general, right? And you can use any saw. I just have a Baco as an example of a saw. But uh, it's really helpful to take your work, your work piece to length, bucket to length, or you can even take off stock. I've seen people do that using the saw instead of a hatchet or a carving ax, something like that. But a saw is important first before we get into the cutting tools. Now getting into the cutting tools, and this is sort of gonna be in order of, uh, of how I'm going to use them if, if I, for instance, I was going to make a spoon. I'd saw my piece down the length and then I would reach for this in most cases. And this is the S-Wing Sportsman's Axe with the leather stacked handle. Did a video on this two, three years ago, something like that. Got a really nice sharp edge on that using that uh, sort of mouse pad and wet dry sandpaper. This isn't a dedicated carving hatchet or axe. I don't have one of those, and this is pretty inexpensive tool. But, uh, you know, I get by with what I have for now, and hopefully in the future I have something a little bit better for, for carving, a little better, a little better shape, edge shape for, for woodworking, carving specifically. But this has served me well. It honestly has, and I've been super happy with it. Before I move on, I just want to touch on this sheath. Not my favorite design of a sheath, but the leather's already been used and it's been working, so I decided I'm not going to make anything new until until this wears out, which probably won't be in my lifetime. All right, now we're going to move on to the knives, where after you finish with the axe or hatchet, you're going to get into the knife to you know get a better shape and, and do your finishing work and, and do the detail. And this is a more classic one with, with a dangler sheath I made. And I have two examples. I use this knife. You see that mora. And the reason why I like using moras, honestly, because they're super thin. You know, the tang is going pretty deep in here. And it's light. They're really light. And if you're going to be carving, doing a lot of different types of, of, of holding it, dif different grips, or, or just in general, if you're gonna be you know, carving for you know, an hour or two using a knife like this, weight really comes into play. So just having it really light is really nice. And the fact, the Scandi grind, these are super sharp. These are super, super sharp. I don't have any, I was gonna bring a piece of receipt or something like that today with me to show you, but these are super, super sharp. Easy to maintain. Really don't have to sharpen them too often if you uh, keep them sharp with the strop. You will eventually get some edge damage up here depending if you're going in some curves or anything like that in your design. This is the companion and for the same reasons I mentioned with the classic, number one, it's light, super comfortable, thin stock, really quality steel for the price. You know, what are these knives going for? I think these are around 15 bucks still. Scandi grind, again, just really light 
to use and hold for a while and comfortable and that's important and i don't even have a dedicated shorter carving knife you know inch and a half long blade or something like that like a soy knife or a dedicated carver because i don't really do super detailed work but nonetheless these have served me really well and i really don't see myself wanting a smaller blade knife because i just don't do that type of carving right now whether at the time or not <laughs> so those are the knives and the last tool I brought with me today is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a small crook knife from Ben Orford. That's his logo in there. And he's from the UK. So this is the most expensive tool I have just because of it coming from overseas. It's an elm handle. And actually this has the hybrid handle. If you're interested in checking out his site, this is the hybrid handle on this. It has that curve right down here. Well, this is pigskin covering the blade, and I'll take this off. I still want to make something a little bit more convenient besides just this pigskin wrap. This is a right right-handed crook knife. This is my right hand. This is the sharp edge on this side right here. And this is a single bevel. Inside this right here, there's no bevel, it's just flat, so like a chisel grind. And on this side, you can see the bevel right underneath underneath his name. And it's a whole nother ball game sharpening something like this. I just have been using my strop and I haven't seen any any edge damage on this so I'm not really concerned or uh, yeah, worried about sharpening right now. I just use my strop, go over it. Oops, let me use this hand. Use my strop, go over it like this. And that's basically all the tools you need to get to get carving. And like I said, this is the most expensive tool I have in my carving kit. And you can get inexpensive moras. I know people have had pretty good success with that. The only thing I heard with those is that you might have to do some work on the edge because they don't come super sharp, which it's up to you if you want to make, you know, put that work in on a really different type of blade with the curve being in there. But yeah, that's basically it. I'm going to put this away because I'm not going to use this today. But like I said, I definitely would want something a little bit more convenient. I don't carry this in my bag. I don't do much carving in the woods, so it's not really that big an issue. This just sits at my house. But this, like again, this is just a strip of pigskin. And I'm just going to wrap the blade up to protect it. This is how it came, too. This came, this pigskin came with the knife. Good enough, doing its job. So that's really all the tools I've been using to create those examples I've shown you and others. I've made a handful of other things, more than a handful, maybe four or five handfuls, maybe. But I've given them all away, so I don't have them to show you. Um, but so you need a saw, right? It's just something simple, a saw, any type of saw. You need a hatchet or an ax or something carving like that to remove a lot of stock that you don't want to do with your knife. And then, you need a, and then you need some sort of carving knife. I'm using or have used Mora's. And then the crook knife is for making bowls, scooping out a bowl of, of, of the spoon or anything like that. It's for making that bowl. And if, if, if this isn't really clear for you, we're going to do a whole series on making a spoon using these tools I've just shown you. So stay tuned for that. Probably each video will be on one tool going through the process of making the spoon. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or want to share any any of your experiences using these tools for carving or any other affordable tools you think would work really well in someone's kit for for outfitting um, themselves with a carving kit let me know leave a comment i'd be interested to hear that too sorry every time every time a noise comes from that direction we're filming in a certain spot and every time a noise comes from over there it's where that bear came down the hill really close to us last year so excuse me if i've it's a little bit distracted before I sign out. That's why. All right, that's it. Later, turtles. <laughs>